Howdy! My name is Pat Gunn, and this is the second class in my course on learning to program with Perl and Python. In this class, we're going to focus on, uh, on the process of coding and what you need to do to set up your computer in order to uh, complete the other classes in this course. So, the process of coding, on some level, is working with text files uh, which are full of code for your projects and then running a compiler or an, in, uh, or an interpreter on, uh, on, those, uh, on those files. And we'll, uh, we'll be getting more into what those words mean uh, uh, later on in this class. Focusing on the first part, you're going to need to, uh, to be using a text editor. And a text editor is just a, uh, it's a program that allows you to nicely edit uh, text files. Now you could use just any text editor and whatever computer you're using, your operating system probably comes with, with plenty of uh, text editors uh, uh, built in. What you probably want to do is find a text editor that is particularly intended for people who are going to be doing programming. There is an editor that I recommend you use for this course. If you if you don't already know of another editor that's uh, that's suitable for programming uh, and that's uh, better, and that editor is called Gedit. If you're using Linux, you probably already have Gedit. Uh, if you're not sure, just pop up uh, pop open a console, type in Gedit, and see if it starts up. If you don't, if you are running Linux and you don't already have Gedit, you can probably install it through your package manager. It might be something like apt-get install gedit, uh, or yum install gedit, uh, -E or well, however you use your package manager, use it to install Gedit. Um, on Windows and on OS X. You also can install Gedit, and I'm going to provide an URL for you to follow in the comments or in the description of this video. The nice thing about Gedit is it's small, it's fast, uh, it's uh, it's not complicated, and it does something called syntax highlighting, which is the use of colors and bold and other attributes in order to show you a little bit more visually the structure of your code. This is important because when you're looking at a big chunk of code, uh, you're, uh, you, if you're using an editor that doesn't do syntax highlighting, uh, your eyes are going to have to work harder in order to pull out the relevant syntax uh, of the programming language. If you're using a uh, um, a text editor that's meant for programming that does syntax highlighting, then whenever you uh, you start to edit a Perl or Python um, uh, project, then uh, then the structure of that is going to leap out at you because different parts of it will be colored red or green or blue or something like that. Usually, you can uh, configure the colors that it gives. So you'll notice I bought a whiteboard. And with this whiteboard, you can see a, uh, a Perl, a very simple Perl program here, uh, hello.pl. This is about the simplest Perl program that, uh, that you'll be uh, ever working with. And uh, you'll also see over here a Python program. Both of these programs do exactly the same thing. Uh, you'll notice at the top, the Pro program will say uh, a hash bang slash user slash bin slash Perl dash W. It'll say use strict. And then it'll say print, then a quote mark, hello, comma, world, exclamation point, slash N, another quote mark, and a semicolon. You also notice that there was a semicolon just to the right of use strict. Over here, this is the Python program. You'll see a hash bang slash user slash bin slash Python. And then you'll have a print quote hello comma world exclamation point 
And then another quote. These are very similar. They're not quite the same because Perl and Python, they are languages that uh, they, ha they share a certain heritage, but just like Spanish and Italian, there are some differences in how you say things and how things look. But if you were to, uh, to, um, to make files, uh, uh, it, let's say that you had a, a coding folder. And if in that uh, folder you made hello.pl with the content uh, uh, as described here and hello.py with the contents as described here, you, you will have written your first program or at least you will have entered in your first program because you didn't design this. But our process on moving from entering, program, uh, entering programs to, uh, to actually designing them, we'll be doing that smoothly. So if, uh, if you have gedit installed, and, and you should go and get gedit installed, again, if you're on Linux, it's probably already there. If you're on Windows, uh, follow the rules uh, that I'm going to provide, or if, if you're on Windows or OS X, follow the rules that I provide in the description of this video to go and get it. But enter these programs in, uh, and you should be able to run Perl for here, or Python for there, on the program. So you, you would say something like Perl space hello.pl or python space hello.py and what you will see hello comma world those, those are the results of running this super super simple program you you'll just see hello comma world so the process of actually writing software at least at its simplest you're going to edit code in an editor. You're going to run a program using an interpreter. Perl and Python are, uh, they are programs themselves. What they do is they read in files like this and they show you what, uh, uh, they'll spit out the result. Now, we will be working with programs that are more interactive and certainly more interesting. But because this program, all it does is print something, it's not looking for input. If you run it, it'll just spit out hello, comma, world, and it'll exit immediately. Now, sometimes if you write software, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to work right. It might not work at all. If you get the syntax wrong, in, uh, in any Perl or Python program that you write, then Perl or Python, they won't start the program. They'll tell you, they'll tr do their very best to tell you what went wrong. Like you're missing a semicolon at the, at the end of this line or something uh, like that. And you'll have to go back to your program and edit it to fix up uh, what wasn't valid in the syntax of the language. Now there are also times when the program might not do what you uh, expect, and that might be because of a similar typo that uh, that might have otherwise caused. Uh, see, if you if you enter in a, a, if you make a typo and it makes it not a valid program, that's that's one kind of typo. If you make a typo that still leaves it valid uh, valid Perl or Python. It'll run, but it probably won't do what you expect. And uh, and so fixing this, fixing these kinds of things is known as debugging. Uh, so to be clear, debugging is when you look back and edit the uh, the source code to a program to either make it compile or to to fix it not doing what you think it should be doing. And oftentimes debugging is pretty complicated in that there are some errors that are obvious. And sometimes the, the, um, the interpreter or compiler for whatever language you're working with, it might just tell you, yeah, you messed up this bit of, uh, 
uh, this bit of code here. Uh, go fix it. But if instead it's not doing what you expect, if it's crashing, uh, something like that, then you're going to have a tougher time, uh, or at least you often will have a tougher time figuring out what went wrong. And there are many different uh, levels of, of difficulty effectively in, uh, in the kinds of problems that, uh, that might exist in programs that you write. Now debugging is a skill and the more time uh, you spend learning to debug, uh, uh, learn, I mean just even learning to work with the language, but uh, the more time you, you spend learning to debug, the better you'll get at it. There are some tools that you can use that'll help you uh, debug things more easily. There are ways that you can organize your code that'll make it easier for you to uh, to find uh, errors. There are steps that you can take. But we'll learn more about those when we've learned more about programming. So this is, uh, this is a short class in my course. What you should do is uh, take a look uh, Take a look at those uh, those pieces of, uh, pieces of code, the hello world example, and just replace the text inside of uh, inside of the quotes with um, with whatever you like. Play around, have a good time, and just get used to the idea of editing code and rerunning the interpreter on it. Um, and maybe if you feel adventurous, try making bigger changes to the program. See what happens in Perl if you don't include the slash n at the end of the line and see if you can figure out what the slash n means. Try entering a slash n at the end of, uh, at the end of, uh, of what's printed before the quotes in a Python program and see what that does. And you'll learn one of the uh, differences between Perl and Python. But, uh, but yes, at this point, it makes sense for you to play around uh, with those super simple programs. Um, and I'll see you uh, at the next class.